I got to keep this short, but I could talk for probably an hour if I want to. Um, the lady that you're about to hear happens to be my wife of 36 years and my love for 40. Um, she represented to me from the get-go an open-hearted, light-hearted, loving being. And I'm privileged to wake up every day and experience that with her. And I'm sure you will experience that with her today. All yours, baby. Um, that's the same for me too. We wake up in the morning, we make some coffee, and we sit down, and we read our Course in Miracles lesson, drink coffee, and we have each other. Three of my favorite things all at one time. Coffee, Joshua, and God. <laughs> so, this talk is really about love, because that is the essence of the fellowship. I'm here, I've been here, this feels like my spiritual home. I was telling Susan Thomas, I remember when, I think it was 1976, yeah it was, 76, that's a long time ago. But anyway, we, a, a bunch of us all got together and we sang that listen, listen, listen and, and songs like that. And what I, I've seen people come and go and that was hard to see for me. You know, I have true loved ones that I have enjoyed in my life and um, I do believe that love is eternal and I feel blessed to to live with that. To know that um, anything can be changed in the twinkling of an eye by allowing ourselves to be our loving selves and not fighting to protect our egos. You know, the story I have about myself. I don't want anyone to to, to not fit my picture of how I think I am. So when people correct me, I might be defensive instead of saying, oh, you're trying to make me better. I can think that. I can translate that. Course in Miracles, Lesson 135 says, what could you not accept if you knew that every step along your way has been planned by someone whose only thought is of your highest good. That was a life change. I'm going to give you a bunch of life changers because I don't know how long my life's going to be, but it's all been associated. Paul Solomon was the one who introduced us to, the, to A Course in Miracles, which is why so many of us got involved with it. I think it was a deal because he'd gone out to uh, Tiburon and he'd met with Jerry Jampolsky and Judah Scotch and helped them get the, a better volume, and he paid money. Did you know that? He was one who made an investment in A Course in Miracles to get the, the hardbound leather volumes. And then he brought a bunch of them back and said, here, buy these. <laughs> and for 28 bucks back in 1976, was 77 by the time they came out of 77. And it was, you know, both of us got like, where do we begin? You know, it was amazing, but we opened it up and get the reading for the day, and it was just a wonderful thing. So, Sarah did a beautiful, beautiful uh, meditation this morning, and I really recommend that per periodically you come and experience that. And one of the things she, hi Billy, I didn't see you come in. <laughs> um, <laughs> yay, good to see you. Uh, one of the things um, that she said was now, let the speaker speak to what is needed in the community. Paul told us that. We were his chalice. There were a group of us that were really committed students. And if he held a meeting, we would stop, drop, and roll over there, you know, and, and listen to what he had to say because he spoke for God for us. And he really helped us to connect with that. It was never all about me. You know, people say, oh, is that a cult? I'm like, hell no. He would bring in different teachers and he said, if you feel that he can get you closer to God than I can, you go with him. And sometimes people did. You know, he just wanted us to know God and love God like he did. So um, anyway, we were, we were all a part of that. But he would say, now listen, whenever you, and I think you could do it with anyone that you were with, but whenever you are particularly in a situation where there is someone speaking about source, love, say, okay, I want you to bring through a personal message for me. 
And I remember at the end of the services, we would do that. And we'd say, oh my God, you know, Paul was talking to me. He, when he was talking about this, it was to me. And so, oh, well, but, he, but when he said this, it was to me. I mean, it was, it's really true. Whatever you need, whatever your heart needs, ask it to come through. If it doesn't come through now, stay for the game. <laughs> because that was the whole purpose of the game. That people would have a question. And there are all the terraces represented in that game. All of them. And I realized when I was working on um, a plant that I'm about to tell you about, that I a hope or an idea I have, uh, that the seven terraces are in themselves a prayer. Those affirmations make a perfect prayer. So what... Um, well, let me tell you about what that, that plan is. I'm just going to get one prop. It doesn't look like much to you, but it's represented months of, of work and thought for me. I am one of those members of the fellowship, Future of the Fellowship group. And one of the things that we read about in the book, it talked about, you need a speaker who is charismatic, who can touch the hearts of people, who can lift their spirits and give them hope and faith and joy. And I'm like, yeah, that's really, really important. And then the other thing was to have the involvement of everyone in the congregation for a certain purpose. And theirs was, it's basically, Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy mind, with all thy soul, and all thy strength, and your neighbor as yourself. Now, you know where that came from in the Bible? Well, it doesn't matter. I'm going to tell you anyway. So, you know that Jesus was this charismatic speaker, and he touched people's souls, and he let them know they were loved. I will never forget you. I will never forsake you. He let them know they were loved. And that love, the people just got from him. He didn't even have to touch them to heal them. They could feel his love and they would be well. The man who couldn't walk, he said, you want to walk? Remember, they? <laughs> it was so crowded, they dropped him through the roof in his pallet. He was like, had, they had to carry him in. And so he's... He's there, and he says, oh, you want to walk? Yeah. Well, stand up, take your pallet, and walk. The guy got up, grabbed his pallet, and walked out. He didn't touch it. I think that, God, that Jesus' love was such a palpable force. He didn't have to say anything. He just could be with someone, and they would feel it. Of course, in miracles says that. Don't let it always be about the words, you know? You know, I, I love to do this. I just love to, you know, maybe I'm sitting in a restaurant next to a, a table, and there's a little trouble going on with whatever. We call that pilikia. I love that in Hawaiian, pilikia. It doesn't sound like, ah, they're having an argument. There's just a little pilikia going on. So, so I just like kind of take my love and surround that table and love them, and things change. And I invite you to do that. I invite you to do that. Don't have to say a word. You know, love the Lord your God and your neighbor as thyself. Now, so that came when the Sanhedrin, I talk, what is it, circumloquaciously? I'll get back to a point I made, but. They were getting all of the people, and the Sanhedrin was not doing so well. The church wasn't doing so well, and they were je jealous of Jesus, because Jesus was a rabbi. And so, they're, uh, and apparently there were Sadducees and the Pharisees. One of them believed in reincarnation, one of them didn't. And so they were always trying to do a competition. But I remember they asked Jesus, well, what is the most important commandment? Because if he'd said one, it meant he would have been in favor with these guys. If he said another, it would have been in favor of the other guys. And then they could have used that against him. He goes, oh, the most important commandment? 
Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind and with all thy strength and thy neighbor is thyself. Well, what's so clever to me about that is every one of the Ten Commandments is in there plus an eleventh because the first four, I am the Lord thy God, thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto me any graven images. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Thou shalt honor the Sabbath and keep it holy. First four about God, right? Love the Lord your God. With the Lord. Okay, he got that. Now, your neighbor, honor your mother and father. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not covet, and thou shalt not bear witness. That's all about your neighbor. And then he added one, as yourself. None of this lowly worm stuff for Jesus, right? Love, it's better to give than to receive, it is better to... No, you got to love yourself. Love everybody and yourself. If I'm walking around lacking love and feeling needy, I'm going to need it from you. I'm going to need it from them. I'm going to need it from this. I need a manifestation that I'm loved and I matter. So love yourself first. Now that's like the eleventh one. So how cool is that? I, I love that. Clever Jesus. Um, and that's what I think is the motto. It, this is the underwriting current of this church. You know, not that it is Jesus. I mean, Jesus was Jewish to begin with, you know. That doesn't matter. I mean, look, we honor everybody. You know, I, I, we started with the Hindu chant that, that affected my life, you know. And I follow the Eightfold Buddhist path because I think that's very clear on how to live a responsible life. And, and I burn incense, which is Catholic, and I have an altar with, with Shiva who burns my junk, you know. So, anyway... We can, we can have it all. So I was going to talk to you about the seven terraces. And this is what I think was Paul's specific gift to the world. The, the essence was the love underneath it. And um, did I bring my glasses? Yes, I did. I, this came from a 1979 lecture by Paul on ILC. And I love this. Because this also combines A Course in Miracles for me. The Course in Miracles says you're not a body. You're free. You're the love that inhabits that body. So start identifying with that. If you keep living from that, your body's going to follow along because it's a lot of fun. When you start letting love be your main motivator, you have a great, adventuresome, wonderful life. And I can speak a little bit about that, but maybe Joshua did already. Anyway, um, you have been taught that what you are is your body, your mind, and your personality. This is the source. That is not really what and who you are. What you really are existed before your body and mind and personality, and I am not talking about reincarnation. It is not necessary to believe in reincarnation to understand this principle. The intelligence that made your mind and your body essentially is you. It's no thing. It's no form. It's all one. With the intelligence and the love that is in all my neighbor, in other words, the 7.5 billion of us on this planet and to infinity and beyond, and our source. So you don't have to be, um, it is the you that pre-existed your mind. It is a cause mind. Your body and brain mind are the results. You built the body you've got. That's the one you wanted. And I gave birth to a daughter who had multiple defects, but she was a source of love for many. She was an absolute delight. People wanted to be with her. You know, she. Because what is the one thing that we seem to feel like we're lacking? Love. I'm a mediator, and I know that at some point, I have to let the people in the mediation know they're loved. I have to try 
to get past their armor. People sit like this, as if they're trying to keep you out, you know? And then gradually, which I have flowers at my table, I have uh, uh, my mediation table, I have coffee and tea and chocolate and nuts and tissues and a smile. <laughs> and my heart, and I've already talked to him a little bit. And, and people that come to mediation, oh no, I, I know, I'm not going to change, I, I know what I want. And then pretty soon, I've let them know I love them, but I've also let them know that I love them. So they're both feeling love, they're both getting a little love, and I can encourage them. Maybe if you give a little, then they'll give a little. Course in Miracles makes it absolutely clear. Everything you give, you give to yourself. And we're like, what? This is mine. <laughs> you know? that's, that's the three-dimensional brain mind thinking. See, our organic mind, our brain mind, stores our memory of everything that happens on this earth. What mommy said about me, what daddy said about me, what a teacher said about me, what my first boyfriend said about me, what my last boyfriend said about me, all these things, it's all stored. And that's, if we're coming from that space, that's what's making our decisions. Kind of limited, don't you think? Don't you want to see beyond? I, sh I thought about it, I wish I requested you to sing that song today. I love that. Yes, of course in Miracles says that. See beyond. See beyond the form. That's what Jesus said. You want to walk? Oh, stand up and walk. Stand up and walk. For the longest time, did anybody see the movie Jesus Christ Superstar? Any oldies in here who saw that? Yes. I love that. I love the music of that and there's so many things. But they got something wrong, and it troubled me until I finally figured out that they misunderstood what Jesus said in the Bible. At one point, they show all the lepers are coming after to heal my feet, da 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 da, heal my eyes, I can hardly see him, and they're all going after Jesus, and he goes, heal yourselves, with a lot of anger. I don't think Jesus said it like that. And for the longest time, that I was like, whoa, I guess I'd better learn how to heal. I'm going to be healer. No, it's like, what he was saying is, heal yourselves. You can, you can heal yourselves. Love yourselves. If you love yourselves, you're going to be in that balance. You're going to be in abundance. You're going to attract what you need to you. You're going to be well. You're going to be whole. And so, that's that's a whole new way of looking at things, that we have it, but not from this organic brain. If I'm in this organic brain, then I'm going to have to look up the latest medical studies, what herbs are good, what, I need Stephen Popham, what are the things I got to take, you know, like a, you know, the, the certain kind of water, and then I got to take the naturopathic this, and I got to do this, and I got to do this, and I got to take this, and I got to do, and I got to do all those things, and maybe I'll be better? I don't think so. I'm a cancer survivor. And I'm like, what the heck did I, because I believe that you create, right? What could you not accept if every step along the way was lovingly planned for you by someone who wants you to be well? Not only that, okay, so I must have had like a little arrogance or a little pride because I got it right on my ass. <laughs> I mean, my rectum. And so, not like a little bump here or a little bump here. So doctors had to examine me, and I'm like, oh. So, but that comes from identifying with the body. You know, I have to think, okay, that's his job. You know, and, and I was very, very grateful for that. But it was when, and I had to have two surgeries. And now that is a pain in the ass, I have to tell you. <laughs> you can't imagine. But anyway, so... It was perfectly asinine. It was asinine, thank you. It was, but now I'm a perfect asshole. <laughs> okay, I, my, my grandfather actually had a colonoscopy. And um, he, he, not a colonoscopy, a col 
colostomy. Colostomy. And, and he would, you know, he, one day he came over, he said, hey, honey, you want to see a perfect asshole? And I'm like, what? And then he shows me, he just goes, <laughs> and he sh shows me his little stoma. Oh, I only have five minutes left. Oh, I could talk to you for days. Um, so I'm going to let these beautiful flowers, I'm going to say what they are, what they represent to me when I do my prayerful seven terrace meditation. Oh, but before that, I have to have one thing because where is Jim Norris? He helped this come through for me today. Thank you. We were talking kids because we this is the only chance we had to talk was breakfast this morning. And I was talking about my daughter at 29 is doing these amazing things. Just absolutely, I mean, she's got a nine-year-old child and she, she's a wonderful mother and she's head of a healing agency for all the Hawaiian Islands at 29. And I'm saying, gosh, I hope she doesn't burn out. You know, and I'm like, hmm. And then Jim says, well, she gets it from her mama. <laughs> you know, because I, I tend to do a lot of things myself. But I had this understanding about two days ago. I know how to reboot. I know how to recharge. And the way I do that, it's like second terrors. The second ter I'm spent, you know, people are like, oh, that's the forgiveness. The forgiveness is the letting go of my stuff. If I let go of my stuff, your stuff doesn't bother me anymore. <laughs> you know? I've taken care of my stuff. So I, I do that, I lie down, and then another Course in Miracles thing is I rest in God. When I, so I totally blank my mind. I totally relax. Do you know that if you relax your mind, your body relaxes? You can't have a thought without your body being affected somewhere. I totally relax my mind. And I go out. I'm still, oh dear, oh well. And so then I reboot and I come back. And maybe, sometimes, it's a minute, sometimes it's two, maybe five, max, 20. And I feel like I'm ready to go again. And if I'm overloaded at work, I clear my head and I say, what's the next thing you want me to do? And I didn't even have a chance to tell you about how one day I was painting, because I, I want to plant miracle consciousness in you. I want you to live with the fact that miracles can happen to you without even you saying, I need a miracle here, help me out here. Because God hears your heart. You don't even have to use words. So I'm painting the side of my house um, and all of a sudden, Okay, I'm on a table. There's a step ladder here, but I'm standing on a table because it was just easier. So what happens, we had removed plants because we had to have our house tented. And I step and the must have been a hole where there were roots and it goes down. And I'm like, oh my God, am I going to fall into the glass of the windows? Am I going to land on the concrete? I've got a, something in my back, a spondylolisthesis in my back. And what happened is I was lifted up I remember grabbing the, the ladder, which was on my left, and it, I must have flown it over to my right, because I was like lifted up and I was gently deposited on my right cheek, about, what, 10 feet away was it? About 10 feet away. I don't know how it happened, but I have a friend who was about to be in a car accident and he catapulted his body to the other side of the street. The cops came and said, How'd you get out of the car? He says, I have no idea. And he says, because the steering wheel, everything had crushed, it. it would have been dead had he been in it. But something took his cells and everything to the other way. And I could tell you stories forever, but just love one another. And this is 52 Sundays of ILC in 10 minute segments. One of the things that we thought you might like is that if everybody spent a year, all of you, going through these terraces, one a month. Okay, starting, this can be like the meadow, all of them, that's one month. Then you've got the red terrace, miracle consciousness. The orange terrace, forgiveness. But forgiveness by seeing beyond. Not like, okay, well you hit me in the face, and, and I, in my righteousness, I will forgive you. 
No, it's like, you know, you were calling for love, right? Because if, if we don't feel like we have love, we do things to try to get attention. That's our substitute. And then the yellow garden is once I've let my everything go, then I'm ready to be remade by remembering who I already am. This isn't I am new. It's a new thought to me. This is who I have been for way beyond time, from source time. Then the green is the loving who I am. Then naturally that happens. When you're coming from God, you know that everybody is an extension of yourself. The will of God, let me tell you something. Everybody hates that one. Thy will be done. It's like, you know, an outer self. You're already the will of God. God willed you into existence. God willed you because he loves you. You don't have to fear the will of God. Then, the, then you have living responsibility. That's the eightfold path for me, you know, right living, all that stuff, kind of being responsible. And then, then there's like a whole month of the white garden. So, uh, not a month, there's a month for each of these, but there's basically fall into winter time. So I'm still working on these, but I've touched every one of them, and it's so exciting. I hope that you guys will do it. <laughs> Just, we're talking about maybe 10 minutes of service. I don't know. But I was supposed to tell you about that plan, and I've got it just about ready to go. But I wanted to get edits from my fellow ILC guides. I love you guys so much. Bye.